Gord, we're gonna, I'm gonna start out by asking you again um, where we are and what we just did. Okay, we're here at the Bell Tower and we just banded uh, three big female chicks produced by E4 on the Bell Tower this year, 213. So, can you tell me why we banned chicks? Uh, a couple of reasons. We get some great information on who they are, where they move, how long they live, that sort of thing, by banding. Uh, but also in the cities here, by having them identified with leg bands, if they do get on the street, people tend to see them as something special. And that's why they, uh, they tend to uh, call us right away. So if it was a bird without bands, they may not be uh, as willing to uh, to call us right away. They wouldn't know it just, it would just be like a big haul. Like so. Excellent. Um, can you tell me what can camera viewers expect to see for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, they'll see a lot of eating, a lot of a lot of that down that they see now will come off. You see the feather tracks developing, the dark parts of the plumage. That stuff will slowly invade where the down was or grow into where the down is and you'll see them shed that down and they'll eventually start to practice uh, flying and using their wings, flapping their wings. Um, what happens after fledging? Well, in this case, they're probably going to, these are both all females, so you probably see them there at up to about 45 days. They could be there even longer, hopefully. The longer they wait to fly, the better. <laughs> so uh, eventually they will launch off. But you'll see lots of things. They'll chase each other around. They'll, uh, they'll chase the adults and come in and drop things. They'll start feeding on their own, too, uh, probably within about a week. And uh, you'll see some fighting over food, maybe. And then eventually they will uh, dive off the building and hopefully make a successful flight on their first try. You know, hope for the best. How often is it a successful flight? Very, uh, very often, especially it's, it's people think, oh, okay, you're downtown, you're going to get hurt or something like that. But there's great uh, uh, knowledge of them uh, with, with uh, things like the website. People are very aware of them. And we get calls right away. Even if they do get into a dangerous spot, people will pick them up or they'll call us to pick them up. The Wildlife Rehabilitation Society of Edmonton has often picked them up from here. Other rehab uh, outfitters uh, have, have done that as well. So yeah, we do get a call and we get a chance to put them back on the ledge. And what should you do if you happen to come across a paraffin on the ground? Yeah, it's, it's, you certainly can call uh, the Wildlife Rehabilitation Society of Edmonton or Fish and Wildlife, uh, that sort of thing, and, uh, and get uh, someone aware of it. And usually, within short order, we'll have uh, somebody out there to pick it up. Okay. Um, has this been a good year for Edmonton Peregrines? Yes, despite the very cold start to the year and some shenanigans like this bird nesting in the wrong place, and most of the pairs have set up and laid four and hatched four or three, and that's pretty good odds for uh, for here. And if we can, you know, we're only looking to get a brood size averaging about 1.25 chicks per year per, per territorial pair, and we're way over that, which means that we will probably continue to grow the population, which is what we're aiming for. And then one last question. Awesome. Um, the male on the bell tower has a bit of an interesting story. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, that was a real surprise to us. Uh, he's the only male, our only bird that we ever purchased or anyone purchased for adding to a nest uh, that was captive bred where we weren't able to get back and, and cut off his captive bred band. So if people get a good look at the male, you'll see that he's wearing a small gold band on his left leg. And, uh, that was a bird that we fostered to a uh, childless pair uh, on the uh, Saskatchewan Drive about, uh, in 2005 and uh, they, it was very very uh, quickly adopted by the community there, the Peregrine Grannies as they called themselves and the little guy they named was Hamish and uh, Hamish was so quick we could never catch him again to put the band on, uh, to change his band and we thought okay well if he ever comes back we'll be able to recognize him. Well who would have believed that uh, you know, eight years later, there would be Hamish owning the downtown core of Edmonton. And so that's who he is. So uh, that's Hamish for sure. Thank you very much, Gordon. No worries.